Welcome to this get ready with me. I'm gonna be doing my hair and makeup and since I'm a little extra, I also thought I would give you a recap of my natural hair journey over the last two years. There'll be lots of pictures, lots of videos, and I hope this is an inspiration to anyone who's going natural or thinking about it. If you're new here, my name is Habiba, and that was me about 10 years old, picture with my mom, and my hair was straightened already. <laughs> and throughout my life, my hair was straightened or relaxed, chemically relaxed. That's what I thought was normal. That's what I thought was appropriate or professional. That's how I was raised. So about eight years ago, for the first time in my adult life, I decided to go completely natural and stopped relaxing my hair, and I loved it. However, because of my work in medicine, I went back to straight hair because I felt it was a little bit more convenient, but I didn't like the texture. I wanted my natural hair back. So in September of 2020, right before the pandemic, I decided to do a big chop and cut off all of my relaxed hair. It was definitely a relief to get rid of all the damaged, straight, straggly ends and start over yet again. I definitely needed another trim after that cut. But I am not a fan of short hair on myself because my face is so round. So during this whole two year process, I wore extensions, I wore protective styles like this crochet braids. I love this hairstyle and I love the hair color. I wore wigs, some of my wigs are from Hair Given Hair. Shout out to Hair Given Hair, I love their units. And sometimes I just wore a scarf on my head and no makeup. But honestly, I've been very gentle with my hair and it has grown significantly in the last two years because I try not to pull on my edges and again, protective styles like this other hair given hair unit. I love the color. Here I was installing the last protective style I had. These are knotless braids that I put in myself and I really liked how they turned out. Super cute, I wore them for almost a month. Which brings us to last week, I took out the braids, washed my hair. <laughs> Let me show you shrinkage. Once I wash and condition my hair, my routine is to work in really small sections. I have thick type four hair that will tangle easily, so I try to be gentle and on kind of medium to low heat, I dry my hair focusing on the scalp and then I loosely twist it, again working in sections. <laughs> wow. Pretty good, right? <laughs> so this is what it looks like when it's fully blown out. Well, you know, it's not dead straight, but it's dry. And it usually takes me about an hour to get through blow drying my hair like this. So I usually can put it in a protective style before I go to bed or, you know, just put it up neatly before bedtime because it was pretty late and I was tired. I was definitely tired. So you can see I've had it braided because I'm thinking, let's have a braid out for tomorrow, right? Let's see what this braid out's gonna look like. So this is the following day. I'm gonna be putting on some makeup first before I do my hair. Do you do your hair first before you do makeup or do you do your makeup first? I don't know, sometimes I switch it up. So I think I'm gonna be using the makeup palette from Beauty Bakery, Sugar Cookies. I love the colors and it happens to be gluten free. And I was thinking about lashes but I'm not sure I'm gonna bother. Anyway, let's put some lotion on. We're looking kind of ashy. Don't forget the hands. Don't forget the elbows. This is from Victoria's Secret. And yeah, just rub those elbows. And mm, look at my lips. Really ashy, right? <laughs> so let's moisturize. Moisturize, moisturize. Everyone is different, but I always start with my eyebrows first, and you can see the tips are rather sparse. So I'm adding some primer from Smashbox, and then I go ahead and use a spoolie to kind of brush them upward, and then kind of make them look neat at the edges. And then using the Precisely My Brow Pencil from Benefit, which I got from Sephora a while back, 
I fill in my brows. As you can see, I try to follow the natural shape and make some natural looking strokes. I really love this brow pencil and I like the fact that it's not jet black so it's not super harsh. It kind of matches my natural eyebrow color. But of course it looks kind of fakey fakey right now, right? Once you draw it in. So you have to use the spoolie to kind of brush it to blend it. It just makes it, I don't know, it just blends it in with your natural hairs and it looks natural, right? Just full. Next, I'm gonna use this small angled brush, which I think I got this from Target Basic. And then I'm using Bare Minerals um, Concealer, and I use that right underneath my eyebrow. So just a simple line. I use really little. Like some of the other ladies use a lot of concealer. I feel like I use very little under my brow, and then I just sort of spread it with the brush. So it just looks really natural, especially if the concealer is closer in color to your skin texture. So I have another concealer that's a lot brighter and you'll see me use it. But this one is a little bit darker and closer to my skin color. So there's the before and there's the after. Before, after. <laughs> I know I can be pretty goofy. Anyway, let's follow up with some concealer over our lids. I love adding concealer on the lids because it lightens it up, especially if you have hyperpigmentation, but also it allows your um, eyeshadow to really pop. So I always add some concealer to my lids before adding eyeshadow. It also helps to add a little primer before the concealer. Okay, so now I'm gonna be adding some foundation. This is the N80, and that was also from Sephora. It was the Cover FX. So I put that all over my face, and sometimes I use a sponge or my fingers, but this time I'm using a brush, my fancy brush from, let's see, where's it from? Blinged brushes, that's right. If you look on Instagram, you can find them, blinged brushes. They make all kinds of beautiful crystal covered black, silver, gold brushes. Love it. All right, for the next brush, I'm gonna need something to add concealer. So I bought two sets of these brushes, the large ones and the small ones. So now I'm adding some concealer under my eyes to brighten them up. And then I'm using the little brush, my concealer brush, to go ahead and, you know, blend it on. Now try to be careful under your eyes, especially as you get older. That skin under your eyes is very sensitive. It's thinner and you don't want to drag it too much. Next comes the setting powder, and I love this setting powder from Beauty Bakery. I believe they are a female black-owned company. You can Google them or look them up, but they have such pretty, cute products. And I think I've done a video in the past where I did an unboxing of all their cute food-themed beauty products. Anyway, I am just gonna go ahead and pile on this uh, baking powder, not baking powder, flour or setting powder on my face. And it really makes a difference. To those who don't understand, I know I look crazy. But honestly, when you add this much setting powder, what happens is when you add your um, eyeshadow, if some of that eyeshadow falls on your face, eventually you can just brush the whole thing off. So when I'm not sure what color to use on my eyes, I always start with a lighter color in the corner. Now, I am not a makeup artist, by no means. I'm just a woman who loves makeup and has been wearing makeup since I was a teen. <laughs> so I'm pretty good at it, at least on my face. Okay, so I am going in with this orange brown eyeshadow. I wanted something a little bright, but I always safely add it to the corner, the outermost corner of my eyelid and then blend, blend, blend. It's all about blending. You don't want this large glob of dark eyeshadow, you know, not blended. That's not cute. So we blend, blend, blend in a kind of shape of a triangle as we go outward. And it'll make sense on the other eye. Okay, see, I'm starting off with like a dot. You see, you see? <laughs> and then I blend it out almost to the shape of my eyebrow, almost kind of like a triangle, a winged out look. That's probably the right word, a winged out look. And then I'm gonna top it with a little bit of gold because I love gold, I love that combination right under my brow. 
just a little gold and then I decided to go in the corner of my eye with that gold as well. So just a little pop of gold. I don't know, I always start off thinking I'm gonna do something really basic, but for me, as soon as I take out a makeup palette, I just start piling on colors. Okay, let's brush off all of that powder, that setting powder. And I know it looks a lot in the beginning, but once you brush it off, it just brightens your face and it lets your makeup last longer. Next, I'm going in with some blush, just some simple blush. Okay, I have Elme. This is my lid liner. I always wear liquid liner. Always, always. I've done this for years. <laughs> I start in the middle of my lash. That way I don't get too much of the liquid eyeliner in the corner. And then once most of it is off, then you see me going in the corner of my eye. But usually when I start applying it, I start in the middle of my lid and then I move outward and wing it. Okay, so now comes lashes. Lashtopia from Bare Minerals or Clinique. I use one or the other. And since I'm not doing any false lashes, I'm definitely gonna wear some mascara. I have very sensitive eyes, as you guys know, and so most times I don't use eyeliner, but today I feel like using dark brown eyeshadow as eyeliner. It's not as harsh as black eyeliner, which I used to wear. Time for a little bit of jewelry before I get my hair together. I can't wait to see what this braid out looks like, because I don't usually do braid outs. I'm usually twist out kind of person. All right, so here comes the Do Grow Hair Oil. And woo, look at her, look at her head. <laughs> I know it looks a little rough, but it's okay, it's okay. It's been in there for a few days. So yeah, I'm just gonna add a little bit of hair oil to the braids and to my fingers before I take out the braids just to give it a little bit of sheen. And again, I have grown all of this natural hair in less than two years. So I'm pretty happy and excited with the progress of my hair growth. And I definitely attribute that to being gentle and wearing protective styles as in, you know, the braids, the crochet braids, the wigs occasionally, and just not tugging on my edges, making sure I am eating a healthy balanced meal, trying to make sure I drink a lot of water and you know, all the good stuff. So yeah, you can see my gray is really showing out, really showing out. <laughs> and I have considered honestly coloring my hair because I know, yes, I look younger than my stated age, as we say in medicine, but I could look even younger if I colored my hair. But here's my logic. When I was younger, all I thought about was, oh, my butt was too big. It stuck out too much. This is what people said to me. Your nose is too wide. Maybe you should consider plastic surgery when you get older. Your hair is too kinky. We should straighten it. You know, there was like so many things growing up that I felt needed to be changed that I wasn't happy with. And so now that I'm older and I'm wearing natural hair, when the thought of changing something or altering something on my body permanently, um, well, even though hair dye is not really permanent, but you know what I mean? It's kind of like, why can't you be happy with what God has given you? This is what comes out of my scalp at this age. And so maybe I should just be happy and leave it that way. So that's where I'm at. But honestly, maybe tomorrow I might color it red or purple or black. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's just add a little bit of edge control to my hairline. Actually, it wasn't edge control. It was just eco styler and then smooth out the edges. But anyway, anybody else relate to what I'm saying or do you think I'm thinking too hard about this? <laughs> Here comes the hoops, and next we're adding a little bit of lip gloss. This is a tinted lip gloss from Beauty Bakery. I really like it, and I like the applicator. So ladies and gentlemen, she has arrived. Can you see the confidence? Can you see the glow? Can you see how we're shining, shining, shining? <laughs> I love my big, big hair, and I can't believe it has taken me this long to really appreciate what comes out of my scalp. 
So like I said, I might color it, I might not, I don't know. But I do love my scalp and what comes out of it. And sometimes I do like straight hair too. And so I love the fact that our kinky curly hair is so versatile. We can do so much with it without permanently altering it. So for those of you that have daughters, teach them to love themselves and teach them to be proud and content with what comes out of their scalp. Do you like it up or do you like it down? Definitely an improvement from my before, right? <laughs> So anyway, I really appreciate you watching this with me and I appreciate you spending your time with this little chat as well. Get ready with me and hair and makeup and don't forget to be kind to that little girl that still lives within you. Bye!